So this is a little topic about, um, we're talking about piping, uh, best practices for piping. And uh, when I showed you the uh, report, I mentioned uh, the remarks or the comments that I put in the report, undersized drip pocket. Well, this is what I'm looking for. And the survey I just did, I noticed this a few times where they had this situation here. Now, uh, a lot of times, if somebody is not familiar with uh, steam traps or steam systems, they'll take a three-quarter inch trap or a half inch trap and say, well, it's three-quarter inch, so I'll just put three-quarter inch pipe on that side and I'll put a three-quarter inch pipe here, make a little tapping here, and then just three-quarter inch all the way. Problem with this is that steam travels at 100 to 130 kilometers an hour. So it's really traveling fast down the pipe. It's sized, most pipe sizes are sized for very high velocity. So if you have condensate in the pipe, it's also traveling that speed. And if your opening is only that small, most of the condensate is just gonna fly right by. So you have to have enough opening. It's gotta be wide enough and deep enough to accept the condensate or receive the condensate. I don't know, I keep getting this stupid message. Um, and then allows the trap to operate. You also have a space. By the way, it's our um, designer, Ayman Fanus. He's our guy, uh, engineering back in Vaughan, who made this diagram for me. So he's under the steam and thermal division. So he was kind enough to make me this d diagram. I draw, drew it out for him, and he made it na look nice. So your drip pocket, this part is what we call a drip pocket, and underneath is what we call a dirt pocket. Normally, we'd want to see a valve. Uh, so we'd put a valve underneath, and that allows you to blow down any dirt that accumulates, because dirt steam pipes are dirty. A lot of times, they degrade over time, and you'll have debris that builds up in your dirt pocket. So if you have a valve here, the pressure behind it will allow you to just blow down the junk that builds up in there. So. It's another link back to our website, <clears throat> and it shows you graphically why for pipe sizes up to four inch, we like to see equal size drip pockets. So having a big enough opening allows the condensate to, that uh, went by pretty fast, so it allows the condensate to collect and helps the trap operate, because otherwise the condensate will just fly over top. So that's why when I'm doing these trap audits, I'm looking for things like this, just best piping practices. Uh, relaying um, steam to a higher level. So um, normally with a steam main or a steam pipe, we want to have um, a half inch fall for every 10 feet of pipe. So you want your pipe to slope. It has to have a slope. So your boiler's here, over, you want it to slope away from the boiler and of course, if you slope half inch for every 10 feet, eventually you're gonna hit the ground. So you want to be able to go back up again. So that's why you end up with this sawtooth design. It goes down, comes back up, goes down, comes back up. Anytime you have a riser, you need to have a steam trap. So anytime there's a change in direction, whether it's this way, that way, or that way, when it goes down, it's not as important, but when you go up, sideways, sideways, you wanna have a trap, and that's to prevent water hammer because the condensate, as I mentioned, uh, is going to be traveling at a very high rate of speed and the steam is pushing it along. So if we're not taking care of draining the condensate from our system, we'll end up with uh, kind of a tsunami because that pressure is just pushing the water along and it builds and builds into a slug and it can actually take out the pipe. It can break the pipe apart, it can rip off uh, flanges. It gets very and it's annoying sound, but it's also very dangerous. So steam that is properly designed, properly maintained, will not have that problem with the water hammer. So we want to have a trap wherever we have a change in direction. And also we want to have steam traps along the main. So we want to have an adequate number of steam traps. And th these are things that I look for when I'm doing trap audits as well. So if you're out in the field and customers complaining of different problems, these are things to look for. <clears throat> and when we're reducing um, the pipe size, normally when we're going into a control valve or a pressure reducing valve, we'll have to reduce the pipe size. We prefer to see a concentric reducer instead of a eccentric. So the concentric looks like that where it's curved 
on both sides. Eccentric is flat on the bottom, curved on top. So that way, condensate doesn't have a chance to pool. We're just looking for ways to not having uh, condensate pooling. So this is another one of those little tricks, best piping practices. Branch lines. Um, we want to see the steam coming off the top because if it comes off the bottom, then it becomes an actual drain. So if you want as best as possible. I know sometimes you have space limitations because your pipe is tucked against the ceiling or cl close to a roof. If you can't get it off the top, at least go to the side. You don't want to see a situation like this where you have your steam main like this and your steam branch going off into a valve because that's a low point. The condensate is just going to pool here and you could damage your PRV. So even with a steam trap here, this is to be avoided because if you take it off from the top, you're making sure that steam gets to your application or to your, the location where you want to feed steam to and not condensate. So steam is on top, condensate's under, underneath.